We are going to do a spectate game. I'm just going to go get myself killed at peak. And then hopefully it redeploys me right in on the center of peak so we can get a good spectate game. Would be awesome. There we go. Okay. Now it's going to give us a random spectate on Champions of Caldera. Now this mode strongly comes down to who is in the best positioning for endgame. And you can't... Oh, this guy's got the burst in Z! But he didn't toggle it to Falada. You just heard it click. I've literally been dying to this all morning. I keep forgetting to toggle it to full auto. This is the absolute play people have been making with a 2.5er as well. Great sniper combo. Even though snipers are uh, pretty trash right now. He's using it, it looks like, as a long-range variant. UAV goes up one of the window right side there. Goes for the stun push. Got it off. Easy kill there. Not even worried about it. See what his secondary is in a second here as well. See how he's got the poison on? This is the thing. I do not even use these poison rounds, the nebula rounds, because they just get you, they, they don't help you, especially in solo mode. This is exciting though. If he does good with this, man, I, it's gonna make me wanna use the NZ even more for an upcoming video here. We got some really good kills with it today, but I just couldn't put together a win yet. Spots one on the right, mounts up. Easiest kill of his life there. Out of the nebula rounds, but see, it makes it annoying to go get his loot here. He could, he probably should just take the balloon and rotate. So, the way you can kind of tell where the zone is closing is which side moves the fastest is going to be the farthest from where the edge of the zone is. So, you can see it's moving slower on this side. Wait, no, it's moving faster on this side, excuse me. Down towards here where it's moving slower. So, it looks like it's going to, we can generally say it's going to pull down to over on this side of the map. And as it gets smaller and smaller, we'll figure out exactly where it closes to, but... It closes in to, like, size of a zone 6, zone 7 off of this. So it's very hard to pinpoint the exact position. But if you can, you have a massive advantage. This is the majority of the time I lose. Oh, unfortunate push out there from the close-range submachine gun. Within the range, by the way, of the Milano nerf that was sub-12 meters, which is where that nerf happened from the 12 to 17. Baby GI comes back, spawned back in down resort side. going to have to keep... Uh, Actually, no, it spawns him in actually towards where that zone is. That actually could be a good indicator. It spawned me over here, too. We'll see if this is where the game actually ends. He can land the stun that he could justify jumping down on the flank, but he's got two more shooting out on the outside there. HDR is secondary. So there you go. That is the sniper support, which actually I, I kind of think is going to be brilliant. NZ 2.5X. I used the STG 2.5 for quite a while as a support. He hears that guy climbing the ladder. Easy peek for the pick there. Love that. Guy was a little too greedy trying to push up the tower here. Scan comes out likely from that diner. We saw a couple peaks there. This guy's not pushed for time, though, so he's got, he's got time. They nerfed the Milano. Yep, they finally nerfed it, man. This gun was my main for so long. Such a good gun, but they nerfed it. Uh, the 12 to about 18, 20 meter range. They made a mid range, a mid damage range. So instead of it just maintaining his damage all the way out there and then dropping off, they made it so it drops off sooner into a mid category and then still drops off at the same point. So it makes the mid range a lot worse, which which is where the Milano was so strong. That's why I always ran it with a 3X. Now, does hop down. He only gets one plate off the body. Could try and go for that buy station in the road, but pretty damn risky. But using the HDR or the ZRG, which is the meta, meta snipers now, you got a huge problem. You got a huge problem using these with the shift in that you no longer have the ability to tank shots. You just, you, you eat one shot, it's a massive flinch, and then it's like, okay, well now what? Falling in with Enzo, ladies and gentlemen. Is this a real Enzo? It's a Mountaineer out here. XM4 has been a one of my favorite guns. Of course, they've nerfed it now twice in the last update. They keep trying to make people not want to use the gun. Let's see what it's capable of, though, because I haven't gone back to it since the second nerf, as a matter of fact. I think he hit the sniper shot on the guy that was low-plated up top with the wall bank. Here's the shots in behind. Beautiful. Gets the counter. It was like a 20-meter range on Calabayo. And I'm not sure what gun that guy was using, but he had good damage. It looks like it was the Cooper. Makes sense. It was good damage, close range. But even that, the Cooper is just... Uh, it is a good gun. 
on a, on a 1v1. That was like best case scenario, I think, for the Cooper. Although that could have just been that player that was shooting him as bad. Or, uh, you know, to the to the credit of Enzo, he's good. If you look at the overall map and where this is closing, it's moving fast from here and here. So it tells you it's going to be, this is the faster, uh, this is the faster side of zone. So the, the zone's edge is going to be over here somewhere. And this is the slowest side is on the right. So I think it might even be like right down over in the water here is my guess. Hits the balloon going airborne. Five kills on board. He's looking for kills out of the edge of zone rather than playing the zone. This is typically how I get myself killed as well as, as well as how I see a lot of people die in this mode though. It is not focusing the actual zone rotation. So we'll see how it works for him. Of course, if he's a little bit more comfortable going for kills here, full power to him. He might be able to get more picks before he does go for the rota zone rotation, as well as if he just clears the entire edge of his zone. Then, of course, it's going to be more confident as shots do come in off his landing. I, I want to say they were from the left, but couldn't pinpoint exactly where that came from as he does dip into the T-shaped building off edge of the set here. Gets himself a nice mask he can use. Yeah, he's in a decent enough position right here, but it looks like the zone's going to close more up on this building set or in the water here. I think this building set would probably be the best one to hold out on. Although, even holding in the open bush could be a good play here. Watching back on the house, of course, he did have shots come in on him off his rotation shot on the back there. He's got the shield to cover him. This is actually brilliant. Shots coming out of that house now. I don't think he saw the muzzle flashes uh, or the muzzle dust being kicked up from... It was from inside the house in that left window. He threw the Semtex a little deep, but it hit! Those the other Semtex in going for the wall. Bang, no connection through. 35 bullets, still enough to go for the push, but close range is going to be hard. He goes for the slide cancel sprint in. He's going to need to get that reload out, going for a couple more spray shots here. Pre-firing the door, trying to get some hit markers. If he can hit anything, that combat scout's going to pop up for him. Spots it. He got stuck! Oh, but he's still alive! The shield covering his back here as he goes for the plate run. Keep in mind that right shield's gonna cover his back as there's another in the in the woods. Goes for the turn, shots covered now. Pinch on both sides as he's running. Looking in the sky, the shield covering his ass. Almost getting his ass ripped wide open, but the shield's covering him just enough as he pulls into the house. What a play! See, this is why I was praising the shield there. It it, because it just registered in my head. You run into so much of this at the end game where you're third party from every angle. Like it comes down to the zone position. That's what I keep talking about. But the shield actually gives you that extra cover. Now out of plates. This might be the end of his journey as he can't get into the actual gas here. It's too risky. He doesn't have a gas mask either. He could buy it, but the gas station, excuse me, the buy station could close outside of the zone on him. So he does pop his daddy for the quiet rotation back to the house where he was at. Can he get an ambush here? He'll get a couple plates back. Gets one to at least top his health. He could take a good one-on-one. -on -one. But now he's about to be forced at that edge of zone again. Yes, it is. As he pops up now, the recon drone to get a couple spots. Sees one off the left there, and that's going to give him a good spot to go for the approach. Couple shots, but he's got to worry about his right. Now taking shots. He's exposed. He's got to worry about the third party. And gets cut down! By a guy named Blue, nonetheless. What the f is happening, man? Kept it alive quite well. Actually, he's making me interested in this thing. But a level nine with the N with the STG, excuse me. What is this, a burst STG that he's using? Why is this thing bursting? What's even happening here? It's a stun off the rotation here. He does have stems. He could pop and move, but... Again, on a fourth play on the outside, look at that. The read of the buy station was pretty good. Does look like game is ending here. Shot down by Scrooge, who was already inside zone in the top eight, but Blue has the respawn. He's floating down. Okay, he does get back on board here. He's a level nine with a Nikita off the rip here. Lands on it, shoots out Slayer, now controlling the top five. M4 off the floor loot. He's got his flashbangs. He's got his C4s. Top four situations, six spectators. Let's see. In another episode of Hack or Crack. 
it's a little more suspicious than most people we spectate. Of course, he did die to the other shot earlier, but this is a level nine with quite good accuracy as he's rotating out. Pretty good positioning. 1v1, here's the parachuter. We didn't get to spectate a lot with them there. But we haven't had a Hector Cracked in a long time either for level nine. Let's see if we can get a post-game interview. Blue X taking home a huge dub. How'd you feel about it, man? And only level nine. Is this a secondary account for you? Talk to me a little here. Dude, freaking mountain, dude. He's right there. Oh my God. Holy crap. Blue X, you had a good play at the end there. So you're Mike Pink for a second. How's your gameplay been feeling now level nine, you, uh, as mentioned earlier? Okay, Endo, how'd you feel about that game? How's the right shield been working GG. for you? Worked terribly. Oh. Yeah, I can tell, I man. Got him. Actually, had pretty good cover for his ass while he was running through it. There it was a decent spectate, nonetheless. And uh, I don't know. You guys are gonna have to be the verdict on that one. It's it's a tough call, I would say. I think it's kind of a tough call. Would have loved to get a post game interview with uh, Blue X there, but not gonna happen. And that's that's a dub off the comeback.